Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're we'll be making this really cool sci-fi panel quickly and easily. Let's get started. Okay, so um, if you ever want to figure out how to like, you know, fill a scene with a bunch of really cool sci-fi screens and panels and stuff, but you don't want to spend forever doing it, there's actually a way of doing it that's really quick, really effective, and I'm going to show you how to do it. The first thing you want to do is actually head over to NASA. So NASA's website, nasa.gov, has got a lot of really cool uh, images and stuff on their website. And I'll put a link to this, but I found a bunch of these just going through their archives. And uh, one of them in particular that was kind of cool, which was this one here, this old um, interior of one of the shuttles. It's a photograph of one of the shuttles. Now, um, I'm going to bring that image in that I've downloaded. So I'm just going to bring this up and I'm going to open up the shader editor. I'll delete the cube and uh, just move the camera out of the way and I'll shift a mesh plane. Okay, now we're gonna do two things. We're gonna split our view. So come over in the corner, you get the little crosshair and click and drag. You can split your view that way. And we're gonna switch this over to the UV editor. And we're gonna switch over to material preview mode, which is this one right here. It'll make it a little bit easier for us to see. Okay, now with this plane selected, I'm gonna click new to create a new material. So I'm gonna just drag and drop that image texture straight into my material and then plug it here into the base color. And there it is. Pretty cool. Now it doesn't look right. It's all squished, but that's all right. I'm just going to look at this straight down on the Z. Now I'm going to enter edit mode and hit A to select all. And then over here, I'll hit A to select the UV. So this is the single UV that's associated with this plane. And we're going to position this on one of these screens. So I'm going to just scale this on the Y and then scale it down. And what I'm going to do is just try and line this UV up with just one of these one of these screens. And now what I can do is come over here to the mesh and I can scale it till the proportions look right. So I'm going to get Control R to create a loop cut. And I'm just going to click right here in the middle and then just move my mouse down. And it'll uh, just create this loop cut for me. And I'll just kind of outline the area where the screen exists. Go. Now I can hit three and select that and hit E and just drag it down. Now what I can do is grab the uh, outer edges as well here. So I can come over and hold down Alt, Shift, and select these outer areas and hit E and just Z to lock on the Z and to bring this down. And then I might hit E again at scale just to be safe. Bring that in. Great. Now I'm going to hit three to go to face mode and Alt click to get this uh, loop of faces. And you can see that the UVs, they're all kind of squished. They're like right on top of each other. So they're not getting anything but this smearing. So what I want to do with that is come over here and hit U, and then I'm going to go to Cube Projection. That will project out those faces. All right, so I'm just going to find a cool spot with some neat detail and use that for these guys. So, so I'm going to click on Island Selection and just separate these guys and then just find a few interesting spots. Now I'm going to think about what we're going to have. So on the bottom, sides. Maybe these bolts would be good. Let's do that. I might alt click and select this intersection and do the same thing. U, Q projection. Oh, that didn't work. Maybe I'll just select an individual face and Q project that face. That will give it to me. And I can just position this guy somewhere. All right, now I want to actually start picking out some points where I'm going to create some more details. So I'll come in here and I'll control R to create some loop cuts. And let's see, actually, do I want to do loop cut? I think so. I'll just loop cut here. And I'm going to isolate these little buttons, creating cuts just right where those, um, those creased, those lines are that separate them. And now I'm going to go to face mode and select each of these faces. And I'm going to hit I to inset. And then I'm going to click and open up the little pop down menu there. And I'm going to turn on individual. What that does is means the inset will um, not inset as a group, but each individual face will inset. And now I can adjust it with this and get it just right. That's going to be pretty good. And now I can hit E and just bring these guys up. I do the same for these things over here. Come over here grab that, that. That. I'm going to inset this and then E. You can see I'm not following the exact shape of these buttons and stuff, but all that really matters is that I've got raised bits, lowered bits. Um, now I could come over here and grab some of these too. We are like, you know, creating lots of cuts, but that's okay. E and Y, push that in like that. Now this particular bit, I want this material to glow because this is a screen, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the shader uh, tab 
And I'm going to get plus to create a new material. And I'll just grab the same one. So we've got the same material in both slots. Then I'm going to click this little double paper icon. And this will make it, you see it's now called Material 02. So it's a new material, but it's an exact copy of the original. Then with these faces selected and just these faces, I'm going to click Assign. And that will assign this material just to these faces. Now I can plug this in not only to the base color, but also to the emission color. And I'll be able to make this an emissive object. So I can turn this up and then we can switch to the uh, render view. And then I can come over here to the render tab, turn on bloom, ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. And you'll see that this guy is glowing now. So I might, I might set it to two, maybe a bit higher, maybe five for now. Now I'm gonna add a bit of bevel to this. So I'm gonna come here and grab the bevel modifier. I'm gonna set it to, uh, let's see, actually it seems to be working. So I'm gonna do two segments, I think and maybe increase the amount a little bit. I'll set this to percent. That will give me a little bit of a better result in this particular case. There we go. Now let's think about the material a little bit. I'm gonna come over here to the main material and I wanna add a bit of texture to this. Um, so I'm gonna go here and grab a bump and I'll plug the color into the height and the normal into the normal. This will use the image to create um, actual bump on this. I'm going to take the distance down to like 0.05, I think, just so it's more of a subtle roughness down a little bit, my specular up. Um, and then what we could do is to go to that micro bump that's there, which sometimes, you know, kind of doesn't look great. Uh, what we can do is add a color ramp and put it right before the bump. And then we can bring up the black value and that will kind of cut off anything that's below a certain uh, value. Now with the screen, select the screen. I'll go ahead and rename this to screen and call this uh, metal. And if I go to the screen, I can adjust this by bringing the roughness down that will make it more reflective and bring the specular up. Now let's see what this is looking like. So let's go ahead and turn our world. I'll go to the world shader and I'm going to take the color down to black. And I will rotate this on the X 90 degrees and maybe forward a little bit. Actually, I'll keep it up for now. Just bring it up some. And then I'm also going to create a light point light, grab Z, grab Y, just bring it out in front of it a little bit. I'm going to give it a color that's similar to the screen. So this kind of teal, and I'll turn it right up so that it's glowing. And then I might even parent it to this object. So control P. Because if you're using Eevee, um, then the emission isn't actually going to send any real light into your scene. So it'd be good to have a light, um, an actual point light that does do that. Make it a bit more blue, I think. All right, so now what we could do is we could take this and I'll, I'll call this screen. And um, if I shift D and hit X, I can just move it over and then like shift D and X again. Then we can do is we come in, we can go into edit mode and you see our screen faces are still selected, right? And they show up over here, the UVs show up right here. So what we can do, I'll just, I don't wanna select those, I just want these guys. I can move this onto some of these other screens. And so now this one's gonna have a slightly different supply, display. I mean, these guys, let's bring them over to this one. Cool, so let's just make a few more screens. Um, let's see, I will just grab these guys, Shift D, Z, bring it up. And this one, I'll go into edit mode. Let's pick a different screen, maybe one of these really cool. So now I've got a nice big panel group, um, but I could keep, keep making these, I can keep going. So we could we could come over and like harvest some of this stuff. So this would be kind of cool. We could, uh, let's see, uh, Shift D, I'll bring this, rotate X, bring it over here. So I can go in here and with those faces selected again, I could go back to metal and assign that'll turn off that brightness. And with this, I can come over here and grab another section. Maybe these, these uh, controls would be cool. Maybe even the numbers would be nice. I think these should be swapped and invert them. Cool, so now I've got like it's control panel thing. Do the same thing, bring this over, go over here, grab another bit. Then we can come in and actually then model out a bit of detail. So we can, we've got enough faces on this, we can actually just utilize those. That up. Here. Control R, make a few more cuts. See how that, you know, that little detail really does a lot to help bring out. Um, What's going on with the texture is let's add like one more light add like a red light down here maybe red. turn it right up 
So by using a really cool photo that's got a lot of detail, you can really get a lot of mileage out of that as a texture. So if you start to really um, line up all those points, find the points of detail and create those little extrusions using the loop tool, using the extrude tool, using a little bit of bevel, getting that material right and trying to you know, really tap into where things glow and stuff like that. All that's gonna help bring your scene together and help it come to life. So now what I can do is actually, I can select all these guys, or actually I can parent everything. Let's say I parent everything to this middle screen. So let's hit A to select all, deselect that camera, and I'm going to shift select that center one, control P. We're gonna parent everything to this. And then what I can do is right click, select hierarchy, shift D, X, rotates, and then, back to global and rotate Z like that D rotate Z like that. So I hope you found this tutorial really helpful. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this and uh, check out the Patreon and don't forget to join on YouTube. That's a great way to support the channel. Special thanks to everybody who's a supporter over on Patreon and everyone that supports on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for helping make tutorials like this happen. If you wanna get this project file, you can join Patreon at the second tier and up this month or next month. That's where you get it. Uh, otherwise you can get the uncut version of this tutorial with a bit of extra detail. Um, that goes up as well for members on YouTube and also over on Patreon. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic week. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.